In this video, we're going to talk about the Atwoods machine. The Atwoods machine was invented by George Atwood in 1784 to verify Isaac Newton's laws of motion. So here we have two masses strung together uh, over a pulley, and the masses are equal. That means that this system is in equilibrium. If you let the object just hang, then nothing moves. But if you uh, allow one of the objects to move, then they both move together with a constant velocity. That's because all the forces are balanced. Now, if you take some mass off, so now there are unequal masses, then that means that the forces are unbalanced and there will be acceleration. Again, if I take this smaller mass and I bring it down and then I allow the system to move, the small mass accelerates up. Even if you throw one object down, the acceleration is still up, causing it to slow down and then eventually speed up in the upward direction. Before we do our first example of an Atwood's machine problem, let's talk about three important things that need to be true about the pulley in our Atwood's machine. Okay, so first of all, when we draw a pulley, it's just a circle. Sometimes we draw a dot to represent the axle, which is the thing that the pulley rotates around. Um, and notice that the rope is going to go along the edge of the pulley, whatever it, you know, is that the pulley will be. Maybe it's a an actual pulley or a spindle or something like that. So we are going to be dealing with ideal pulleys and there are three uh, important features of an ideal pulley. The first is that we pretend the mass of the pulley is so small that it's insignificant or it is massless. So a massless pulley. Uh, because the pulley doesn't have mass it's not going to affect the force or the tension on either side of it. The second thing is that we uh, are going to assume that at the axle there is no friction. So no friction at the axle. But along the edge of the pulley there is friction because the pulley is able to perfectly grip the rope and pull it along as it rotates. So sometimes you can say yes friction at the edge, um, but typically what this is, uh, what this looks like in a problem is it says the rope or whatever, the wire, um, is not slipping. If the rope is not slipping, let's do another P. If the rope is not slipping at the edge, then you've got an ideal pulley. So these three things, they make up an ideal pulley. Okay, so now let's take a look at an example problem. A three kilogram mass is attached to a two kilogram mass by a rope as shown below. When the system is free to move, what is the tension in the rope? Okay, so this, this is just a simple Atwood's machine. We have two masses um, attached by a rope over a pulley. And when the system is free to move, that means like if you're here, maybe you're holding that two kilogram mass and then you let go. When the system is free to move, the pulley is going to rotate counterclockwise because I know that this three kilogram block is going to go down, it's going to accelerate down, and the two kilogram object is going to accelerate up. So the first thing that I want to do, there are a lot of steps um, in solving Atwood's machine problems, but the first step is to sort of look at it and think, how's it going to move? Then actually draw arrows in the direction um, of that mo that movement. And when I say movement, really what I mean is acceleration, right? I'm going to see an upwards acceleration of the two kilogram block and a downward acceleration of the three kilogram block. So I'm gonna write plus A and an arrow next to each object. You don't have to do this for the wheel, but that, that is something that we can do. Um, we'll actually need to look at later. But for now, you just you really don't even need to draw that if you don't want. Okay, so we've indicated the direction of acceleration for each object. Another thing that I might do, just because it'll be easier for me to work with equations, is to name the 3 kilogram block um, maybe A, and then the 2 kilogram block B. So you could draw an A on it if you want, or put an A or B next to it. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure that somewhere you write down MA equals 3 kilograms and MB equals 2 kilograms. Because that'll be important for us to solve the problem. 
Okay, so, oh, and just so that you know, remember, we're using 10 meters per second squared as the acceleration due to gravity um, for these problems. Okay, so we've, we've drawn the direction of positive acceleration. We've written down A and B for different masses. So what's the general idea of, of how to solve this problem? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of the fact that the net force acting on each object, so like net force sigma F A, the net force on object A, the three kilogram blocks, it's going to be equal to the mass of A times the acceleration. And the net force on B, sigma F B, will be equal to the mass of B times the acceleration. Now this is a lot like when you have two boxes connected by a rope and then they're being pulled by some external force. You would call one of them A and one of them B and you would write a net equation for force for each individual object. That's basically what we're doing here only now there's like a pulley in the middle and they're hanging on either side. Okay so let's get rid of this. Bye bye. And now let's think about well what are the net forces acting on A and B? And if you want, you can draw free body diagrams. Or if you prefer, you can just sort of draw the forces on the picture of the Atwood's machine that's shown. Um, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So for B, I'm going to have, let's start with this one, two forces. I'm going to have the weight of the object going down, which I will label MB times G and then tension in this rope and the rope pulls the two kilogram box up so I know that there's going to be tension up and I know that that tension is going to be larger than the weight force uh, because the two kilogram block is going to accelerate up now I can write an equation for the net force acting on B I would say that T is positive because it's in the positive direction which again Remember, we know what that is because we, we marked it earlier in the problem. It's in the same direction as the acceleration, so T I would write as positive. Um, and then the weight, mbg, that's going down, so I'm actually going to write minus mbg because that is the downward direction and that's going against the tension. Okay, so now let's talk about the net force on the 3 kilogram object or the net force on A there's going to be a weight force down m a times g because gravity pulls that block down um, and then a tension acting up in the rope that sort of resists or pulls up on the block as it falls down now here's the key to um, this problem the Atwood's machine problem like if you don't get this you will get the wrong answer and you'll screw the whole thing up it's twofold Number one, as long as this is an ideal pulley, then I can say that the tension on either side is equal. So these tensions, they are equal to each other, which is why I'm writing congruent marks on them. And the second part is that this tension points up, but the acceleration of this object is down. That means I'm going to make tension a negative force instead of a positive force. So like for the net force on B, we made tension positive and weight negative. But for A, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to say that the weight is positive because it's in the direction of the acceleration down. So M A times G. And then I'm going to subtract T, the tension, because it's going up. And for block a, we're saying that down is actually the positive direction of the motion. Okay. So again, it's really important um, that you notice that the tension, it's a shared number. Like if the tension is 10 newtons, then it's 10 newtons here, minus 10, and then positive 10 over here on this side. Okay, we don't know what the tension is, so I'm, I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, so, so now we have enough information to solve this problem. Uh, and, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the equations of net force for A and set them equal to each other, right? So I'm going to have MAG uh, minus T equals MA times A. So that's what I get from the net force 
on A. Then I'm going to look at B, and I'm going to write T minus MBG equals the mass of B times acceleration A. And recognize that I'm not writing A um, like capital A and then A capital B because as long as these two objects move together, they, they move with the same acceleration. So we can just call this A and we don't have to say AA, AB. Okay, so let's pause for a moment and, and look at what we've got right here. We have two equations, and we know most of the stuff in these equations. We know what the mass of A is. It's 3 kilograms. We know what G is. It's 10 meters per second squared. We know what the mass of B is. Okay, so we put in little check marks to, to say, I know what those are. That means that the thing I don't know in either equation is tension and acceleration. So we have two equations with two unknown variables. Now if you don't know, this is something that we call a system of equations. Which is exactly like when we have two blocks attached with a rope and then some net external force acting on them. So what I can do with this system of equations is try to eliminate a variable. I can either eliminate A or I can eliminate T. Um, we're actually going to find out that it's, it's a lot easier to eliminate the tension first uh, and then using the value that we get for A, plug that back in and find the tension. Most of you would probably do substitution. Like, let's say I had, oh, I don't know, how about 2 minus x equals uh, 2y and x plus 3 equals y and I ask you to solve for y, then most of you would say, okay, well, how about x equals uh, y minus 3, and then you plug that back in here. So you get 2 minus y minus 3 equals 2y, so 2 minus y plus 3 equals 2y, or add y to both sides, right? And then 2 plus 3 is 5, and so y is uh, 5, over 3. Okay, so substitution and then you solve. That's one thing you can do. Remember, another thing that you can do is you can add the left and the right sides of the equation. So on the right, I would get 2 minus x plus x plus 3 equals 2y plus y, um, which if I rearrange that, right, the minus x and the plus x, they cancel, so I'd get 5 on the left and then 3y on the right, and boom, y equals five-thirds, uh, and, and I can use that little systems of equations trick, adding the left and the right sides, to get to an answer more quickly. Well, this is what we're going to do with our two equations that we've written here. I'm going to add everything on the left, and then add everything on the right. When I do that, I'm going to eliminate T, the tension, and so I'll get MAG, so the weight of the 3 kilogram box, minus MBG, which is the weight of the 2 kilogram box, and that's going to equal MA times A plus MB times A. Now, um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to factor the acceleration out on this right hand side. So, what this would look like is this would be. Um, m a plus m b in parentheses times the acceleration. Sorry, m a g minus m b g. Uh, and then to uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to solve for the acceleration because I I know all of these numbers. M a is three kilograms, m b is two kilograms, g is ten. So I'll divide both sides by m a plus m b, right, because when I do that, then I cancel these things out. So that's what my acceleration equation is. 
to find it, I'm, I'm just going to plug all those numbers in. So I'll do that down here. Mm, actually, no, let's do that off to the, to the right up here. Acceleration equals. Okay, the mass of A is 3 kilograms times G is t uh, 10. So 3 times 10 is 30. So 30 newtons minus the mass of B, 2 kilograms times G, 10, is 20 newtons. So minus 20 newtons. And then divide that by the combined mass of A and B, which is 5 kilograms, 3 plus 2. Okay, so 30 minus 20 is 10 newtons over 5 kilograms. So my acceleration is 2 meters per second squared. Now, that's not what the problem is asking me to find. The problem wants me to find the tension. And let's have our little blues clues moment. What do I do with this acceleration? Where does it go? Over there, over there. Yeah, you just take this acceleration. Let me uh, get rid of all this stuff that I did with the systems of equations. Okay, so remember I still have these two equations, but now I know what the acceleration is. So I can plug that acceleration into either equation to solve for the tension. It just doesn't matter. Um, I'm probably going to use this equation, t minus mb times g equals mb times a. And I'll solve it before I plug numbers in. So mb times the acceleration minus, I'm sorry, plus the weight mbg. So that's going to be the mass of b, 2 kilograms, times 2 meters per second squared, plus the mass of b, 2 kilograms, times g, 10 meters per second squared. OK, so the tension is 4 newtons plus 20 newtons, which gives me a whopping 24 newtons of tension. So that is the tension that is acting on the Atwood's machine on either side. Now, I, um, I went into way more detail uh, explaining you how to do this than, than really you, you need to, to show. Um, most of the time, I won't write this down. I'll just jump, jump right to these two equations. Um, and, and then I'll do a lot of the solving uh, off to the side. But this is the general process. You, you write equations for A, for one object, and then you write equations for B, the other object. Then you use that to find an acceleration. After you've found the acceleration, you can then plug that back in and get attention. Um, so there's a lot that you could be asked about in this type of problem. Um, but once you've done a, like a few Atwood's machine problems, you realize that they're just, they're just systems of equations. And they're a lot like two blocks being pulled by a rope attached in the middle or um, pushing two or three blocks. Uh, and you, you'll get used to them. They're, they're really easy once you've done a couple. So that's it for this video. You did a great job. Congratulations. And yeah, this video is over. Buddy.